Hey guys, welcome to another RPG episode. I am Roarin, and we're going to be taking a look at Octopath Traveler for the PC. Mmm, I've been wanting to get my hands on this for a while, and I have. And I'm quite a bit of ways in it, in a manner of speaking. I've only completed chapter one for each individual character. And I believe there are four chapters for each individual character. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. There's not a whole lot of settings going on. We have game options for text language. Voices. Message speed. Vibration. And cursor. Hmm. Should I switch it to remember? Yeah. And then we have display resolution for graphics, display mode, preset rendering options. Right now I have it currently on high. Yeah, we could probably turn up everything to high if we wanted to. Corner shadows. Screen brightness. Then we have volume for voice, music, sound effects, and ambient sound. Then we have the game button uh, menu screen where you can change the game buttons. Keyboard, mouse. So let me go ahead and continue in with one of my saves that also auto saves. All right, let's first take a look at the world map that we got going so far. I've just been doing a little bit of exploration and thieving around the big towns. I completed mostly the small little towns, which is around the inner circle. Then you have like a middle area for for level two towns. And then you have the far end towns, which is level three. It's best not to go overboard on your exploration because let's see, this area is level 45 and up in order to get to to pretty much third town in this general section area. I still have a lot of map yet to, you know, map out, of course. Only the darkened areas of the map are only able to be unlocked, not these light area maps right here. Alright, let's go in the miscellaneous tab and take a look at the menu here. We have tutorial for everything that you have came across so far. Settings, of course. Return to title. Quick game if we want to. Got status of your character. You have a primary job starting off. You have to find the ability to unlock secondary jobs throughout the world. And there are four higher level kind of secret jobs. Let me go ahead and get to a town real quick. There should be a town this way. This is level area 2 town, which I should have already completed most of the... Except for the side quests. Now the way I say completed, I mean these like little options that you get whenever you unlock certain characters. Mm hmm okay we have the journal we have this is the area where the side quests and the main quests are right now I'm on the tab of the side quest it doesn't tell much when it comes to side quests you pretty much have to discover and get the hints on your own I'm sure you can look up guides online or whatever now the check marks are the ones that I've completed so far 
And if you want to go a little bit specific, you can look at them from whichever lands there are initially at. And then we can switch to the main story. As you can see, I've only completed the first chapter for the main characters. Chapter 1. We have our inventory screen. Items, weapons, shields, helms, all kinds of neat little stuff. Valuables, knowledge. This is all for the initial side quest that you get both of these tabs for the valuables and the, and the, and the knowledge bits that you'll unlock with certain character skills. We have a healing tab, so if you have anybody in your party that has healing abilities, you can use that from here. We have the equipment tab, where you can, you know, of course, you know, equip stuff. Let me go ahead and unequip everything to give a generalization of how to build, like, characters and whatnot if you want to. We have jobs. This tab doesn't open up until you unlock certain jobs, which can only be found in shrines, like uh, this one. Shrine of the Sta Sage, Shrine of the Flame Bearer, of the Huntress. Uh, you would have to discover these in secondary levels where you would need to be 20 or higher. And I've unlocked all of the main ones. The hidden four I haven't gotten to yet because they are a little bit more high level than I need to go into. So we can switch the character's job if we want to. But you can only do it... You can only have a job that nobody else has. If I want the Apothecary, I would have to take this guy off of being an Apothecary for his main job. And let's go ahead and take off uh, their respective secondary jobs. Okay. And then we got skills. We can learn skills from our main trees, or our secondary trees. I'm right now building each character's main tree up, though I have branched off into a lot of other skills from the other trees. Like for instance, uh, this main character that I have, which is the Thief, which is the first character you start, uh, well I started off with, I cannot take him out of party. That is one of the all one of the very few drawbacks I have of this game is is that I can't exchange my main character for a different character. Another one of my main drawbacks is that there is no alchemy system even though you got an alchemist in your in your character list. Uh, it's this guy. He can concoct potions, but only in battle. Which is lame. There should have been an alchemy tab. And I think I had like one other drawback of this. Oh yeah, there's no bestiary. That irritates me. Because I want to look up monsters and I want to see what kind of items that they drop or that you can steal from. There is no bestiary in this game. Which is unusual for an RPG. Okay. Now each character has their own like little specialty, their little special abilities. Um, let's take a couple of unique ones. Like that one. And that one. 
these these mostly these two these two have the best unique abilities All right let's dive into the character status screen for instance I started with the thief so this is the main character that I use his primary job is thief and he's capable of using two weapon types swords and daggers and if you look down at the uh, at the bottom of his unique actions uh, path action for the class itself he can steal from the the belongings of townspeople if you fail and your reputation will suffer so basically that skill is to do this and steal possessions from townspeople and you have a certain percentage to steal whatever from others I like this one this one I have installed and everything I have a 15% chance to steal that so if you find a very good item worth stealing you probably want to save scum like I do like some of these items right here dragon scarf the beastly scarf uh, mighty belts the elemental augmenter they all had low chances to be st stolen like three percent so I saved scummed and did a bunch of that now if your reputation does fall while doing one of these actions you have to come to the bartender and restore reputation and it costs a certain amount of money some places are more than others uh, let's see what else does the bartender do. You can start chapters of NPCs if you want to. Uh, you can also access the equipment of every single one of your characters here at the pub just in case if one of your side characters that you don't have in your party has an item that you want. Right now everybody's de-equipped. Mm, what else? Let's check this look at the status again. And his special talent is the open, tightly locked purple chest that you encounter in your travels. Normally, you wouldn't be able to open them unless you have this character. Let's see. Alfin. His path action is to make friendly banter with townspeople to gather rumors and information. The this is very highly valuable as some enemy some townspeople like this one has a discount at the end you might encounter some that have uh, hidden items stolen around in various spots around the town most of them don't have anything going on with them like the like this one. This one has a hidden item stored somewhere. I already unlocked that and found it. So I'm capable of actually finding like little tiny hidden items here and there. Also, some items might allow you to basically unlock new items at a weapon shop or a item shop some have it where you would have to gain information for a mini quest where you can do this inquire some enhances the skills to other characters like like allure or charm or guide or anything like that that enhances other characters abilities but mostly this is to gather information and not only that, each character kind of does things twice. Like, you, you have two characters that basically do the same thing. Like, right now, I have in my party, Inquire and Scrutinize. They both basically do the same thing, except for Scrutinize is the negative action, and it has a percentage to fail on certain NPCs. That is for this character. Path action. Provoke the target into doing battle by setting a monster on them. 
If you fail, your reputation in town will suffer. And her talent is to capture monsters and beasts in battle and train them to fight by your side. Right now you have a main monster. I don't know if he levels up or not, but it doesn't seem like he is. Maybe if I complete chapter 2 for her, he will level up. And then you collect monsters in-game to do whatever. And they have certain abilities or certain attacks that might be weak against an enemy. And the times they're summable is right there. The number 4 for that, 5, 5. This one heals. So I have this one in here. And I think this is the only monster that has healing capabilities so far that I've came across. So that's her ability. She is very, very useful. And one of the funnest characters that you can get. Then let's go to this magic guy. He can interrogate a subject to glean information off of them. And his special talent is that you gain insight on one of your enemy's weaknesses at the start of battle. So there's like little weaknesses that enemies can have in battle that are susceptible to certain things. Alright, let's change the party members again. Uh, that one. That one. And that one. Now here we have a character, well two characters, that can bring in other people. So as you can see I originally have four but now I have six for some reason. This is basically, uh, let's see, can't guide them, ah, we can allure them which has a percentage uh, chance to fail. If we do that, it will replace the person that we have right now. And right now, currently, on my dancer character, I have an elderly woman that hits fucking hard. Look at that shit. So no, I don't want to get rid of her. Or we can guide them with our healer character. And she right now has a character that casts magic and has somewhat okay strength but they are summonable in battle so let's take a look at their statuses path action use your wiles to charm and lead a townsperson around a talent summon a townsperson you have charmed to aid you in battle this is the same one for this hero he healer character she has light magic, while the dancer has dark magic. Path action offers guidance as a cleric of the Path of Flame and leads townspeople around. You also need to have one of these to do certain side quests, guiding one NPC to another from one town to another, and has the ability to summon uh, characters in the battle as well. So very useful to have these two characters, just in case if you're facing a heavy boss. Uh, it's good to have them around, and if you spec them right, especially with second jobs, they could be really, really well off. Like, say you want your dancer to be a caster, a secondary caster, and your healer to be... A dancer herself. She has the ability to cast night magic and light magic, while this has the ability to uh, cast fire, ice, and lightning magic. Uh, let's see. You would also need a character that has wind magic, which is the merchant. The merchants can use wind magic if they so need to. This is all the, for the purpose of basically lowering the weakness of enemies merchant all right let's check out the merchant status 
She is one of my favorites, mostly because since you need a lot of money in the game. A lot of it. Uh, path action. You can purchase an item or belongings from a townsperson. This is basically like stealing, but the safe way. You buy the items from them. Like, let's say, this character. I think she has a forbidden item that you cannot steal, but you can purchase. I can buy that if I want to. But no, no. I, I'm okay. I don't, I don't want that bow. At least not yet. I think you have to have them in order to unlock superior weapons and shit. And then her skills. Talent. Collect money left behind by fallen adventures and the like. So anytime you enter a new zone out in your travels or a town, you gain money. You gain a certain amount of money. So she is basically one of the constants that I want to have in my party all the time. Because I need it. And then we got our final character. That's one of the drawbacks of having a lead character. I can't, like, have a Team A and a Team B, which I usually do when having multiple characters like this. Path action. Challenge a townsperson to a feat of strength. This is basically like the pet trainer ability, but without having to use the pets. And talent. Boost def boosts when defending to protect against mighty blows and for of formidable enemies. So he's basically your tank character. And if you spec him right, he can be a giant powerhouse. Especially with a second job, if you give him Apothecary, this is basically like the best tank in the game. If you spec him and equipped him right, if you give him like the... Uh, certain certain skills to you know help them out it's very very good um, but right now I'm trying to evenly level up certain characters and I'm trying to figure out who I want on my main team since I'm stuck with the thief as part of the main team so I basically want him, I want Tressa, I definitely want a healer caster, and I definitely want a tank, or somebody that can take a lot of damage. Like, she's good to have around. This is probably your best, well, my best bet, since I chose this character as the first. I kind of wanted to go back and play through again and select either this character first, or this character first. Or maybe this one. Since concocting potions is really good. Uh, if you have the items available to you. But if I was to basically start all over again. I would either start with Tressa or Hanat. Mainly for their, their personal abilities, like her beast taming, or her ability to basically find money on the ground anywhere she goes. Now, since I got my Team A characters all set up, let's see, how should I lay out the character in design? I definitely want my healer basically freed up to do anything. Uh, to be healing, but just in case if she needs to. I usually go with healer and dancer. Hmm. Uh, but let's... It's hard to lay out who you want to start off. Uh, I give her pretty much a hard-hitting skill tree. So it's best to have her as a scholar or 
a thief. I'm probably going to have her... Scholar. I'm probably going to have him... Merchant, since he has most of her abilities. And if I spec him out right, he would be able to collect a lot of money. And that's... I can give her Apothecary. But she already has the axe ability to use. So I could probably give her Warrior to give her two different other types of weapons that she's capable of using in battle. And we definitely need somebody who's capable of casting dark magic. Because a lot of these enemies have a weakness towards darkness. So, uh, that's the way we have it currently set up. So our scholar, uh, our merchant can use both wind, fire, ice, and lightning abilities. So that sums up that magic pool quite nicely. We have our ultimate thief, our ultimate warrior, beast tamer, and our healer and support. Now let's set them up with certain skills. Since this is our ultimate thief, uh, we can have definitely gain money after battle more. The equipping character will receive double loot when stealing or collecting skills. And since this is going to be a pretty much basically an avoid character, so it gives the equipping character a chance to attack twice. And where's the other one? There, there's another one. Eye for an eye. 50% chance of counter attacking after being targeted by a physical attack. And if we load him up with evade and speed, he's basically awesome. So Platinum Sword has speed on it. Uh, the Victor Spear has speed on it. Uh, evasion. And it has a secondary ability occasionally decreases target's physical attack. Makeshift bow. Let's see. Uh, that has critical. We can use critical. And elusive shield that adds evasion. These others minus evasion, so we don't want that. Silent bandana. Silent cape. Now he's loaded up with a buttload of evasion. Speed. Increases attack. And do we have a critical somewhere of decent quality? And we can go even higher evasion. Alright then. So he's basically untouchable. And since he's a thief, he already has the ability to steal SP, just in case if we need it. Steal HP. Rest, which restores one's own HP and SP too, as well. Uh, he has secondary wind magic, just in case if he needs to. Uh, dodge, which is a very heavy sidestep, and hired help, just in case if we want to spend money. But we're, we're trying not to. Our ultimate thief character. 
Let's see if we want to build a magic character. This is definitely our magic character, so let's give them Elemental Glaive, Brilliant Bow, a Wizard's One. We stole that. They have that elemental attack of 300. Hell yes. Element, no. No, not Elemental Shield. Elusive Shield. Now let's find some powerful elemental hats. That has SP. Elemental attack that has 50 attack, 61 attack. Now we need to increase our SP. So we have 50 or 80. And our elemental augmenter that increases our attack by 100. Now we go into skills. Now this increases our SP even more. This lowers the cost by half. This increases our augmentation. So that has better elemental attack. And what else do we got? Mm. Increases our health, no. Speed. Eagle eye, accuracy. Hmm. When a character uses this, no. Go, hang on. When the user is not near death, all attacks would reduce... When the user is not near death, all attacks that would reduce the user's HP below zero will instead leave the user with one HP. I think that's the best one. Basically, like a, like a glass cannon. Or we can increase one of our stats. All right. I think we're doing good. If we have the staff equipped with her, her elemental attack goes up to 738, while she has a base attack, uh, elemental attack of 438. Yeah, depending on which weapon you have equipped, uh, for whatever character, gives the best stats. Soul knife, uh, elemental attack for light and dark magic. Uh, elemental tech 98, 158. And she's the ultimate warrior character, so we have to have great amount of attack on here. Oh, we could probably put some items that does... Uh, elemental bow. Who has the holy longbow? You do. Hmm. We can have a blind target. Ah, oh, that's fine. Yeah, give give the ultimate bow user the best bow that we have. Since she's basically the tank. And I guess it's good to have her equipped with that, maybe? No? No, that.
Hmm. Bishop's hat. That's a good one. And then equip that. Yeah, that's good. Round off these characters. This will be... Since she doesn't have that good amount of SP, let's increase that a little bit. And... Increase HP. You will have the ability to restore HP in a battle. Uh, yeah, there we go. And do we got everything? All that's left is to skill them out. Mm. SP. Evil Ward increases the party's success rate when attempting to flee. Grants the equipped in character to be healed above their maximum HP. That's good. And she doesn't have much to go on. Uh, yeah, that will go. I don't think we have a... Uh, I'm probably good to have that. Second serving. Eagle Eye. Incidental attack. Someone's strength. Let's change that out. The equipped in character will gain a 25% chance of acting again at the end of a turn. But once you branch them out into other different trees, uh, more skills will be able to fit. Yeah, that SP saver down there would be good for her if I start giving her the ability to tap into the merchant tree. Uh, can I learn the next one? I don't think I'd be wanting to get this one anytime soon. Attack on a single foe and receive equivalent amount of Receive money to the equivalent amount of damage dealt. Although that is, that does sound really good. Now let's go ahead and test this build out for these characters. This is gonna, gonna be right out here, fighting a little bit. Alright, I don't know uh, no most of the characters, uh, most of these enemies' weaknesses. Right now there's only 5% chance to do that. We have to lower the defense of some of these. So let's test out Wind. The winds of fortune Alright, that one's a no-go. Let's go with fire. And we already killed that thing. The flame guides us true. We are kind of over leveled for this area. Quite a bit. 
But there you have it. And there's right there is Tressa's ability. Uh, level 23 danger. We're above that for most of our characters. We should pro I should probably start doing chapter 2 for all these things. For all these people. And start building equipment and secondary job classes. Though I kind of want to go through all the non... All the side quests that I missed for chapter 1 so far. But I kind of gained a bunch of side quests for that. Octopath Traveler is a very, very good game. Very fun. And it has me involved deeply into it so far. And those three things that I mentioned earlier. Not changing out your main character. Not making use of an alchemy crafting system. And not having a bestiary. Are the only drawbacks that I have for this game. But everything runs fine. It looks so beautiful. The music is great. The areas are nice. The character skills, if you complement them well, it all goes well just nicely. I kind of want to try and g make a run for the other shrines. Uh, th there's a map that I think I will end up linking down in the description below to get myself... Um, Make a run for the other shrines. Make a run for the, the four others. Uh, they're off in the edges. So who, who knows how I would be able to get to that. Uh, I don't know if there's one over here or anything like that. Or over here. But yeah, the map is fleshed out. That there there's a, there's a link to in the description. And it has the levels of whatnot. Grinding XP, job points, and money takes quite a while. This is a grind fest of a game. And we'll have you pretty much quite involved for quite quite a bit of it. Hmm. But there you have it. Octopath Traveler. I've been talking for a while about this game. I usually go an hour, but I, I guess we're good. Uh, the battle system has... has build-up points whenever you use a turn in battle. You can build a boost and have a maximum of five and then unleash devastating attacks, especially when you break your enemy shields. So good. This game is so good. Oh, what did I steal from you? All oh, the, the dragon vest. He, this one had a 3% chance, too. So, yeah, make make use of the character's abilities, the character's uh, uses in battle. I think I'm going to... I should hop off of this and start playing the other games of my series before I start... Uh, start, you know, not recording. Because I, I already ran out of Tales of Vespria videos. I still have a few Okami videos down in my in my sleeve. But yeah, there you have it. I'm getting off of this, getting myself something to drink. You guys stay furry. Comment and subscribe if you so feel like it. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.